back with the Strength of Women. Hello. It's great to have you guys here. We're really happy you guys decided to stay and talk to us. Um, I guess we want to open up to questions first. Why don't we introduce? Introduce yeah. down the line. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Don't we'll trickle. Don't trickle. Don't trickle. Don't trickle. They're already being so nice to wait. So go ahead. Great. Um, so my name is Laura. I was a part of Refugee Women. My name is Brian. I was part of Trifles. I'm Robbie. I was also a part of Trifles. I'm Mariah. I was part of Trifles as well as Refugee Women. I, I'm Adam. I was Mr. Hale of <laughs> Trifles. <laughs> 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 understand you know the concepts of the show and how it all pieced together and then Professor Ray came in and helped explain a lot um, she honestly I hadn't even thought about it as domestic violence until she came in and said the words domestic violence and then honestly it like clicked for me like that and like it honestly blew my mind uh, like how like because I would just go through the script in my head I would just realize like how many signs there were like pointing to domestic violence just, uh, it was something that I didn't even realize was existing in a play. Yeah, and for you guys, like coming from that outside perspective, like how from the audience perspective, how did that really read? And like, were there any things you guys picked up on that we kind of like showed throughout? The number one thing for me was definitely the bird, because in domestic violence, perpetrators a lot use pets to perpetuate power and control over their partners. Um, so for me, it seemed like the um, husband must have killed her pet bird, and that was like the final stick for her that broke the camel's back, and she was either hurt, was, she was gonna die, or he was gonna die, so especially for her time, I think. And another aspect of the pet, um, choking and strangulation is one of the biggest indicators of lethality in sexual and domestic violence, um, and just because it was a pet doesn't take away from that regard as well. It's all about power control. And then I think one of the parts that stuck out to me was um, how her personality changed over time. And um, people stopped coming to the house, like her neighbor stopped coming to the house because she said it was cold. Um, and that it just wasn't a kind place anymore. Another topic that came up was, I know you talked about this the other day, um, was justifiable homicide, which is kind of a big <coughs> but that's kind of an interesting topic just because a lot of people have different opinions on that and sort of like where the line is drawn. Um, and so we kind of allow the audience throughout Trifles to kind of like make their own decision about that. I don't know if anyone in the audience has any opinions on that or like if they came to any conclusions that may be different from what the show was implying or not. Um, does anyone want to speak to that? No? He's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just listening. So refugee women, I guess. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I guess <laughs> refugee women, what did you guys think what what are the takeaways from your show is specific. I mean, I know that a lot of people let like a couple people speak to this for sure. Um, I know that it was interesting for us coming from where kind of where we're coming from, which is not necessarily a first hand um, view. 
So that can kind of be tricky sometimes to make that read for the audience since we're not necessarily, we haven't been through the same things as our characters have been, but that's just one of the challenges of acting, definitely, is just try to kind of put ourselves in their shoes. Um, does anyone from the refugee cast want to speak to that at all? Yeah, I'll talk. <laughs> um, so my character, I have never, luckily I have never related to her in any single way, but there are people in this world that have gone through that and some people just like don't have the platform to talk about it, but we are lucky enough to have a platform where we can talk about it, make it a known concept, because some people like to not really want to discuss it because it's kind of a hard topic, but like we are lucky, like all of us are lucky enough to share people's stories in the most accurate way possible. Sorry, we have a question for the audience. <laughs> got oh, excited. Yeah, sorry. First of all, amazing, all of you. Great job, awesome. Thank you. Um, in Refugee Women, uh, you go, it's a play within a play. So I just want to know how all of you coped with those strong emotions that you're portraying in the play to then have to bounce back and forth from the other aspect of the show. Yeah. That was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 from the play within the play to the regular play and like after one of the toughest scenes with um, Kira, Kyla, wow I'm so <laughs> when Kyla gets um, her child taken away from her um, I have to like come in and just totally act like it's fine um, so that was it it was a really hard transition to do and that in itself was hard, but I think also just stepping away from rehearsal and being like, okay, that is not my story. I'm telling that story, but like I don't personally identify with it, and I need to like recognize that I am a different person from that, and be thankful that I'm not going through that right now. I think like the transition, like for me, I didn't have that much transition, so I only actually have that one part where I talked about me being in Hollywood. <laughs> That's where she's heading, guys. Yeah. That's where she's heading. But um, I think it was it was in in parts easy to be like the person in the ref in like the refugee camp because like you can act like oh like this is my cure voice. But like when I go back to Happy Well, like you have to make sure that tone of your voice, that transition, like is so different because I think the audience is hard for them to read. Like when is she Bethany? When is she Happy Well? So like. For that, like I like struggled with it a little bit, but definitely like like for Ange, like she transitioned all the time, so it was hard. It was good. Okay, I guess I'll ask this. Heading back to trifles, um, a lot of us a lot of us played parts that had personalities that we're not really used to per se. Mariah <coughs> specifically, a quiet, <laughs> stand in the back, you know, things happen. <laughs> Um, and you know, with the guys, I mean, I, I, I speak for myself, I guess. I'll let you guys speak, but it was really hard to like stay in that negative atmosphere of just like, just like bullheaded minded, just straight thinking. And I guess I ask you, how, how, how was it making that transition throughout the play? Like, how did you, how were you able to get in that role? And what do you take away from those type of people, you know, from then to now? Uh, I mean, well, like, obviously, like, it's acting, so, like, you, got, you have to assume that role, but, like, um, it's definitely hard being, like, a person you're not, um, so, but it's a, it also, like, allows you to, like, take that step back, and, like, even if you're not meaning something, it could be taken, like, the wrong way, so, like, just, like, it, it's, like, nice, like, self-awareness. I'm still not even used to it. <laughs> Because, like, I just view everyone as kind of, like, the same, and everybody's just, like, a human, so it's hard to just, like, act a certain way towards somebody that you just, like, completely defer to on a regular basis. So, I mean, I guess, like, yeah, it's acting, so you can't really, like, you can't really look at it as, okay, this is how I'm going to be, like, this is, like, what people are going to portray me as, but it's just, like, that's who you're trying to be in the moment. So, I don't know, I guess it's just all in the perspective that you have in that point in time. 
Yeah, I know for me and Emily it was really interesting because we're both kind of social people. We're, we're kind of loud, you know. And the title of the play, you know, Strength of Women, it's you, you kind of expect the women in the show to just be kind of loud and just kind of obvious about what they're trying to say. And it's kind of easy to see, you know, how Kira could do that in her clean voice and whatnot. But it was definitely a different technique that we had to use in titles just because it was 100 years ago. And so the strength that we kind of had to portray was silent. You know, a lot of that was in what you saw, not in what you heard from us. And so it was very difficult, like you said, like for me, I'm, you know, I want to say something. I want to say it. I'm just yeah. going to say it. I'm just going to say it to you, and that's going to be it. But for this, we couldn't. And it was one of those things of an inner battle the whole time. We were having this inner, internal, not only with ourselves, but with the audience. I feel like you guys could feel there was like a world within a world there. Like what we were trying to say, we could only say by what you could assume, by what you saw. And so that's all, also a trick of theater, but also just a different way that women were able to be strong back then is with what they did kind of behind the men's backs, you know, without them knowing. Like you had to be sneaky, you had to be quiet because if it was obvious the game was blown, everything was blown right there. Um, and I, like for my grandmother, I talked to her a little bit about this topic too, and like learning that sort of domestic life, that, that kind of situation where in a home, like if the men are in the room, you, you kind of stay quiet unless you're spoken to. And I asked her about that and she said that, you know, she's had experience with that. And just for us to have that conversation and realize that we're alive, you know, so much later in our generation just doesn't, doesn't get used to that so much. And so that was definitely an adaptation of character for sure, like you said. And I think we all struggled with that. But I think it was nice to come to this point where we can just share the story in a comfortable way with guys. Yeah. yeah, one thing we always talked about with Steve at rehearsals was how back then, like, women were almost treated like children. They were meant to be, like, seen and not heard. So going into rehearsals and doing the play, like, we had to put ourselves in that mindset. So, like, while the men are there, like, we like we're not supposed to speak until we're spoken to, like Mariah said. And then I think that was definitely the hardest struggle, like putting ourselves in that mindset because like Mariah not said, like we're both that, kind of yeah. like more outspoken people. I'm sorry. Um, I think a lot of excuse me, sorry to make you a lot of um, trifles was a game of parallels. And I think what you two just spoke to a lot was how um, it was very blatantly obvious that the men were undermining you for um, being domestic and being women. And I think that paralleled with the idea, we didn't see what had happened in the domestic abuse, but it was very hinted at that she was obviously being demeaned in a way and she was being manipulated and controlled. And just because um, the men weren't directly being nasty or physical towards you doesn't take away the fact that that language is abusive. Matter what, you shouldn't be undermined for anything about you, right? So I just want to highlight that just because it's not physical or it's not aggressively emotional abuse doesn't take away the fact that it's abuse. Period. Yeah. So I have a question. So much of these stories are about gender roles, mm -hmm. and, the, and and I think some and some of the evolution of, but then I question. So much, and I wonder if you guys would speak to that. It's, there's still moments I see where we're silent, despite it's 100 years later. And I'm curious what, how that feels to sort of maybe be a reminder of both of those moments and also a reminder of the growth that we see in both of them. Well, <laughs> so as someone who is sort of experiencing both sides as a transgender man, um, I grew up very. Demure, I was um, very much like Mariah's character, Mrs. Peters, when I would kind of sit back and I'm still pretty much like that. But um, on the other side of things, like I think the gender roles, now that there is a movement in like different sexualities and um, more openness about being able to um, identify outside of the gender binary, uh, personally, I feel like gender roles are kind of thankfully uh, decomposing a little bit and mixing. It's no longer really shameful for women to like more masculine things or men to like feminine things. Um, and just the concept of having such strict um, separation between the two, I think there's that's going away a lot, which is really great. So that's my take on it. <laughs> <laughs>
talking about how like it doesn't like are we different now and, and there is a line about that in refugee movement, if you heard, um, like, are we different people? You know, are we, have we changed since then? And after being in both shows, like, literally jumping 100 years ahead and literally in costume and all in my head and everywhere, um, it's interesting how the silence has changed, you know, of course. Like, in the social way, yes, but in the way that they were talking about in refugee camps today, you know, the women are told that they're being separated. And, you know, a different man for each, you know, and you're not going to say a thing about it. Because if you do fight, you'll lose your life. So what's worth it? You know, is it worth it to fight? Or is it worth it to find some way to redeem living and surviving? And so I feel like the survival instinct will never go away because we're people and we're living things. Um, but definitely, I would never say we're different people. I just think we're all going through a different kind of the same thing. <laughs>
So do we have any more questions for the audience or any way that it was impacted you or did any any of these things spark anything with anybody? Not necessarily okay. No one has to speak. No one has to speak. I just wanted to say <laughs> one thing, aside from the fact that you all did a fantastic job, it was really very engaging and current and relevant and great. So I wanted to say that, but I also wanted to say, and I think you touched on it, sort of the value of, I think when you're in an abusive relationship, you're kind of in the quicksand, like you're in it, and it's really hard to get out of it, sort of the importance of the value of other people, you were talking about bystanders, other people sort of helping you see and feel what you become numb to when you're in it. So I think the value of being a good friend or even being an acquaintance and being able to mirror what you're seeing to the person who's in it. So I think you touched on that, but I think it's really important. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for coming. We really appreciate it. We really hope that you enjoyed the show. And if you get a chance, come back and see it again. <laughs> We're here all weekend. <laughs>